Oh boy. You can see as I step on the tiles. So here's the red guard. Hello, welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. Today I have a failure video where the homeowner used red guard to build his shower and he got some instruction from a nice guy at Home Depot. The Home Depot salesman told him, hey, here's this new product called Red Guard, and all you need to do is just paint it onto the surface and it's bulletproof, that's all you have to do. Uh, those were some bad instructions, right? There's a lot more to it than that, and a lot of homeowners have used Red Guard to waterproof their showers, and a lot of them fail. But what we have here, um, walking right in, I can tell right off the bat, um, there's water actually coming up. You can see as I step on the tiles that we got lots of water coming up. So if you, if you have a, a tiled shower like this and that is happening, there's definitely something wrong. That's a red flag, hey, we got a shower issue. You need to get it looked at by a professional. Here's something also interesting that I wanted to show. Um, he actually used Red Guard to seal up his toilet too. So you know, he sealed up a crack in his toilet with, with Red Guard as well. So, okay, so let's just see. These tiles are probably gonna pop up pretty easy. Let's see what happens. Okay, so yeah, I can see the pink under here. Let's see. Oh, I wonder what kind of adhesive was used. This almost looks like mastic. Uh, this is kind of a rubbery adhesive. It doesn't feel like thin set mortar. Mastic is not a good adhesive to use in a wet area. And I'm pretty sure that's what that is. You can see that's that's just mastic, so it's just, just coming right off. It's not, it's not bonded like cement. Once it gets wet, it just kind of falls apart. So now these tiles are just, just popping up without anything going on. And there's more of the mastic in the standing water. And so we have, we have some mold growth going on in the mastic. Mastic is an organic adhesive, so it has stuff for mold and bacteria to eat, and so it's not a, a good thing to have in a wet area. Um, and you'll see the mastic is just kind of this mushy. When it, when it gets wet, it just disintegrates. Red guard is pink when it's, when it's wet, when it's dried, it turns like a deep red color. Actually, this drain cut was really nice. Look, look at this nice drain cut. So the homeowner has some, had some skills, right? I mean, that's, that's a really nice drain cut that even a tile setter would, a professional tile setter would be proud of. So there's some stuff that's, uh, you know, that was done right. So yeah, nice, nice drain cut. Did a great job, stone the edges, made them smooth. And so it looks like, so here's the red guard after 20 years of being down. And luckily we're on a concrete foundation here or else this would have been a lot of trouble. Because, you know, there's, there's no waterproofing under the red guard and the water's still standing in a pool because the concrete is uh, holding it in. So let's see what, what we did up on what's happening on the walls here. So dang, the walls are installed well. I mean, that's... I'm banging those tiles and nothing's broken. So that's a really good sign. So yeah, used mastic again on the wall, and the mastic 
actually held pretty good on the wall because it wasn't submerged in water. Still, I don't recommend it. So there's all that standing water. And you can see it's blackened. The mastic is blackened and just turned to mush. And that's, yeah, that's a smell. Um, it's probably just bacteria and nastiness in here. Um, you know, this stuff can be a real, it can be a real uh, health hazard having unsanitary showers like this. And that's, that's one of the purposes of my videos is helping people get not only a properly built shower for aesthetics and use, but this is a health thing. This is a health hazard. And I believe that everybody deserves a safe bathroom to take a shower in and use. All right, let's see how the curb was constructed here. And so those tiles are lifting off really easy. So these guys just came off in one. And there's that mastic. Okay, let's see what's on the face of the here. Yeah, we'll see how this is built. So it looks like they did a red guard curb and then a layer of uh, mortar on top of it. Oh boy. Oh boy. Look at that. There's that wood curb. So there's, there's, this is a lumber curb and I'm, st I'm sticking my chisel all the way to the tile on the inside. I'll bet if I pull this, there'll be a hole through it. Yeah, there you go. So you can see there's actually a hole all the way through the, the curb. The curb's completely rotted out. That's what happens when things aren't waterproof correctly. It basically just turns into dirt. Looks like chewing tobacco. So this is, uh, you definitely can see that this red guard did not, did not hold up and do its job because this curb is completely rotted out. Let's see what happens if I hit this. It's just mush. Yeah, look at that. That's what's left of the wood curb. So Red Guard did not do its thing here. And let me just check to make sure. I'm sure that's the case going all the way through here. So yeah, here you can see the here you can see the inside of the curb. It's basically the same as the outside was. And that that whole curb is nothing left of it. There you go. That's what the curb looks like. There is a shower curb when the red guard has failed. To me, this looks like redwood, doesn't it, Zach? There's the rest of it. There's the rest of that curb. Okay, so yeah, so this is one of the worst curbs I've ever seen. And uh, I guess we could call this curb less, right? <laughs> It's not the way you want to have a curbless shower. You don't want your curb to rot out. But um, again, this is on a slab foundation here. So they got really lucky. If this was upstairs or on a wood foundation, this whole thing would have just been destroyed. It would have been just going right down. 
The big question is, is do we have any rot that's in the studs? If there was this much water damage on the curb, I'm not very optimistic. Okay, so what he did here was he took, he did a poly sheeting. This looks like, like a four mil poly sheeting or visqueen as a vapor barrier behind the wonder board, which went up here like this. Then he did red guard and then mastic and tile. So I'm gonna take off this sheeting and this is gonna kind of reveal what's really going on back here. Oh, he read, it looks like he red guarded the studs, which could, this might have saved this whole thing. Yeah, look at that. So he red guarded the blocking, the lumber, and this is going to be, I'll bet this is going to be dry. So let me cut this red guard out and we'll see what this bottom plate looks like. So it's wet, but it's firm. See, there's the red guard. You can see over time how fragile this stuff gets. It's, it's lost all of its elasticity. Um, so nice to see that this block isn't rotted out though. Um, the bottom plate, which is probably a pressure treated, that might have saved it. So we'll go around the wall here and hopefully the rest of it's in the same condition. Okay, so actually Bob did an excellent job on putting the base down. He actually put metal lath, expanded lath, in the pre-slope that he did. The, his company built the Monterey Bay Aquariums, and he showed us a photo album of some of the stuff, and it, it's just incredible. They were building these massive aquarium tanks right on the shoreline. He got a little sideways with the advice that he got from the Home Depot guy about just being able to put red guard. But a couple of things that he did actually saved this whole project. So what he did is you can see he put red guard on all the framing members before he did any of the pre-slope or anything. He even put it down on the, on the ground, then did his pre-slope, then waterproofed that. But what that did is even though our bottom plate, this pressure treated is wet. It held up because it had the red guard on and it was just enough protection to save this. So all of these are good. Even when they're wet, they're good, good framing members. So that's going to be really good news. It's not often that I do these failure videos and have good news for the homeowners. This shower lasted long enough. And so I have a really cool announcement to make. We're gonna be rebuilding this shower. And you know, my hat's a little sweaty here. And um, we're gonna be building this new shower with Flex Seal. And if you guys haven't seen my Flex Seal testing video, I hope you go check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. But that video has almost 100,000 views in just about two months and over 500 comments and people wanting me to use this on an actual shower. So we're going to go ahead and do it on an actual job. This rebuild is going to be done with Flex Seal. That's the only waterproofing we're going to use is Flex Seal. So stay tuned. You do not want to miss that video. It should be coming up in a couple of weeks as we rebuild this. And we have some beautiful 12 by 24 porcelain. We're going to be putting in a niche with a nice glass accent and uh, some 
pebbles on the pan. So this is going to be a beautiful bathroom. You don't want to miss those videos. If you're not subscribed and you don't have your notifications on, I suggest you do. So you see this flex seal video coming up and check out that link in the description so you can watch that video if you haven't already seen it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. And last but not least, I love you. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.